Hello, everyone, and welcome here to a little training session that we're going to be doing today, talking about how to set up and use Visual Studio Code. My name is Dr. Frank Tuzzi, and I will be your guide through this session today. First thing we want to do, of course, is we're going to be installing Visual Studio Code. Visual Studio Code is a little different from Visual Studio. It is not as large, which means that it's faster and more versatile, but it's less robust. If you're doing uh, programming with multiple data files, I'm sorry, multiple programming files that are working in tandem, as in a project, you probably don't want to use Visual Studio Code to do that. But for the most part, you can use Visual Studio Code. First thing we want to do is install the Visual Studio Code on the system. Then we're going to run this, the program. We're going to run Visual Studio Code. We're going to configure it for uh, good extensions and a compiler if that is necessary. So the first thing we wanna do is go get Visual Studio Code. Visual Studio Code is actually a Microsoft product. So we'll go to visualstudio.com, I'm sorry, visualstudio.microsoft.com slash downloads, and we will get to this website here. You'll note the first item that's up here is Visual Studio. This is the most recent version. This is not what we're gonna be installing this time. Um, we're not gonna be using this. Instead, we're gonna be using the lighter version. Scroll down a little bit and you'll see Visual Studio Code. This is the one that we want. And uh, you can install this on a variety of systems. You'll note that it's available on Mac, Windows, and Linux. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go pick. Notice the varieties that are there. Actually, there's an even a, a more button where you can see even more options that are available for you to choose. So pick the operating system that you use, that you have, and download that version of Visual Studio Code. After you finish downloading it, of course, you'll want to install it. And so after it's installed, you should be ready to go. You can open it up and run it. Uh, the next thing we we'll want to do is we we'll want to add some extensions to it. So first thing I want to do is open up Visual Studio Code. So what we're going to do is do that right now. We're going to open up Visual Studio Code. This is basically what uh, this uh, system looks like. Um, the first time you open it up in particular, it's going to have uh, stuff that looks like this. Some uh, instructions here as to what you can do. Also going to give you some work on uh, past jobs. What we're going to look at just a little bit is the environment here. The first button up here in the upper left allows you to go get a file. A little explorer will open up and allow you to do that. You can search. You can look for uh, source control information. Source control is actually something like GitHub, uh, a place where you've got material sitting on some server somewhere and you want to be able to uh, access it from a distance. That's what that does. Uh, we're not going to be dealing with that today. You also have this thing in here called a debugger, which we're not going to deal with now because we have a better way of doing it, and that's with the extensions. Here's your extensions button. You're going to want to click on that and add some extensions. Uh, you'll note I've got a whole bunch of extensions that are sitting here. You are interested in C++. So we're going to go up here and just press C++, do a search, and you'll see there are come some that pop up here. Uh, here's one that you're going to want to install. Okay, and here's another one that you're going to want to install. These are the two primary ones that I'd recommend you do. One of them is the IntelliSense, and the other is an extension pack. So I'd recommend you install those. They're very easy to install. Just click on it and press install, and they install right away. The other extension you're going to want to include is a program, is a little extension called um, Code Runner. Where'd you go? is called Code Runner. Where did you, there it is, Code Runner. So you'll want to install Code Runner. Code Runner is going to allow you to have this little button up here pop up automatically so that you don't have to go look for things to run your code. It's a great thing to have, so I've always included it whenever I'm teaching this. All right, so after you have those extensions in, the next thing you'll want to do, I'm gonna close extension, just click on it again and it'll close. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna open up a template. This is a template I typically use, hopefully to teach a little bit about C++. Okay, so as we're looking at this, you'll see all the funky, nice little colors. They all have a meaning. So you wanna remember what these meanings are. You'll note the first three lines, all green, and they all begin with slash slash. 
That means it's a comment, slash, slash, in front of anything, you've got a comment. Look at this whole file here. Well, you've got a lot of comments here. Designed so that you can understand more about how to program in C++. If you have any sources that you want to include, hey, I got this information from X, or hey, I, 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 I modified code from this guy, you'll put that in here. Next line is what they call an include statement. Now, include statement is just, uh, um, sorry, include files are files that are pre-made functions that somebody has made. And rather than do them again, you get to use their code. So what's happening here is when you have an include statement like this, you're basically saying, hey, I want to include these files that have a whole bunch of program, I'm sorry, has a whole bunch of functions in them that I want to use. That's what that's for. In time, you'll be adding more of these. These are pre-made functions. Another comment section here is global variables. Eventually, you'll be making programs that are large and they're going to include multiple sections, multiple functions, and you may have a variable that you want to use in all those sections, all those um, functions. That's where you're going to put your your uh, global declarations there. Next one below that is uh, with a line here that's called prototype declaration, I'm sorry, function declarations. So if you want to create your own function, you're going to have three things you'll be doing with it. First, you're going to declare it up here. And then down here, you're going to define it. Okay, you're going to define it down here. And in the middle, you're going to call it. Okay. So before the program actually begins, and this is where the program actually begins, you're going to declare a function. Hey, this is a function I plan on using in this program. That's what this does. We'll talk more about that in other videos. Uh, inside your int main, and this is your main section of your program, you're gonna have pro function calling. So at some point in your programming, you're gonna say, hey, I wanna call that function that I that I declared earlier, and now that function will be called and, and run at that, at that particular time. Uh, the last part down here is where you actually define it. What is this function actually? What does it actually do? What are the steps and procedures within it? So you declare it at the beginning, hey, I wanna use this. You define it down here, this is what it actually does, and you call it here, I'm actually going to use it now. Okay, so that's what's happening with all of those functions. And don't worry, we're not gonna be doing that today, but you will want to eventually know how to do functions. Inside in main, again, we've got some other things here. Here's a see out function, console out, and I've got things like name and lab number. You wanna change those, you certainly can, just to say, hey, this is my stuff. Any variables that you wanna declare, you will declare after this line. Variables are things like a, or time, or person, you know, A equals a number, you know, time equals, you know, time, person equals a string, and you'll be declaring them there. Um, if you have any logic programming that's going on where you do, you know, math calculations or you do comparisons or do uh, loops or conditions or any other types of things, those are all going to go here under your programming logic. When you're all done, you may have some closing statements that you will do here. So this program is set up and we just copied and pasted it. That's all we did. It's just full of notes for you to learn about what's going on. And I can run it. I can come on over here. I'm just going to press this little down triad button here. And notice where it says run program is control shift N, at least on my system. Yours may be different. I can just click here and it'll run. And you'll note that it, uh, where did it go? There it is. Here is the output window that showed up. And notice that it says your name and lab number. That's because that's what was up here in the program, right? Your name and lab number. Oh, hey, let's change this. We'll just go in here and we'll change this to something else. Okay? Notice, please, an important part here is, is right here in the tab. You see now that's a little round dot there, right? I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna go File, Save, and when I save it, that little round white dot becomes an X. You see an X, everything is saved. If you change something, okay, notice I put a 22 in here, and all of a sudden that round, that X is gone. It's become a round dot again. If I try to run right now, 
the change in number is not going to be there. I need to save this first. So this little dot here says, hey, you got stuff you need to save. I'm gonna save this again and now it'll run. Now when I go to run this, it'll pop up with my name and, uh, and the lab number. You'll notice that it changed, right? So it's important to remember this up here. Uh, keep an eye on that as it's going to help you recognize whether some code has changed or not. All right, so let me clear this out so we can get a nice clear window there. So I've, I've changed this information, but as a typical hello world type of program, what I'll do here is I will add uh, some program logic. I'm gonna do another C out. And again, C out is console out. Go out to the console. And here I'm saying, hey, throw this variable. And our variable is just gonna be text. Okay, and uh, notice that it's in quotes. It has to be to let it know that it's in that it's a uh, text. Okay, and then you'll notice at the end of this hello world, at the end of all C++ lines, there's typically a semicolon. No semicolon, and the program is not going to run. So I need to put a semicolon here. Okay, and then again, as you've noticed, I've got a circle here because I changed data. So I need to go and save this so that it will take that new data. Okay, now everything has been saved. I run it again. And what do I get? Now I get uh, the words, hello world, and I get Red Rover, right? Those things are popping up properly. Hey, this is also popping up, right? Um, command not found. This line here is a Windows command, a system command, pause, and my system doesn't understand it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna comment that out as well. Notice that it became green again. So I'm gonna save this and run it again. Let me clear first. I'm gonna run it again, and now it pops up without the error message, okay? This is a little bit of how you use uh, Visual Studio Code and how you can make files and do things. Uh, on a basic level. All right, so after we're done with uh, putting this in, oh, hey, we forgot something. You need to make sure you have a C++ compiler. If you don't have a C++ compiler, then your program isn't going to run. Uh, if you're on a Windows system and you didn't install Visual Studio, you only installed Visual Studio code, you probably need to go through this information. If you're on a Mac or a Windows, you probably don't, I'm sorry, Mac or Linux, you probably don't need to do this because the compiler was already installed. So if you're not, uh, if you don't have it installed, what you need to do is come on over here and get started using um, GCC, which is the uh, GNOME compiler for C, and we'll do that on this website here. So I'd recommend you go to this particular website, and that's back here again. Click on this website to get the information about how to set up uh, GCC. Where'd we go here? Here. And it walks you through the process of setting up GCC, how to install it onto your system, and what other commands need to be done in order to get it to working properly. It's not hard to do. Um, and after that, then you can do what I have done here, which is to create uh, this uh, first file of yours, which is the uh, Hello World practice file. And uh, when you're done, you can, of course, save this to a location. They would probably recommend you make a folder called Projects. And inside there, make a folder for every project you have to do. All your data for each project you ever do should be in that folder, at least initially, until you understand more. So that's how that's going to operate. After you're done, you may want to capture the image of your completed program for posterity, for someone who wants to verify that you've actually done this work. So what I will typically do, so my program ran here, yes? And they wanna capture this window. What I'll do is I'll use a capture program to go and capture that. Now on the Windows system, you typically can use Windows plus Shift plus S and that little program will pop up and let you do it. On Mac, it's going to be Shift plus Command plus a dollar sign. And on the Linux side, they just click on Print Screen. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna uh, activate the program and you'll see that it pops up. And it, then I can create a rectangular block, which is what I'll do. And then I'll select the area that I wanna block. 
Um, and when I'm done, it gets saved. Now that section is a file that's been saved. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy that. And then when I'm done copying it, I'm going to uh, create a new file. So let's just create a new file, call it a text file, and I'm gonna paste it in here. Now I have a verification that this is my program that I created on such and such a day and time. Um, and that's one of the things that you can do to verify, hey, this is really me. Well, that's basically it. We have uh, installed Visual Studio Code. We uh, modified the extensions. We modified the compiler if it was necessary. And we created a file called Hello World. I hope you uh, can use this information. I hope that it was helpful to you. If you have any questions, you can certainly get online and post me a block here. And I will see you again. Have a nice day.